Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for July 19th, 2016. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today I'm going to talk about new vulnerabilities that were announced in both OpenSSH and in Windows. Also going to talk about a breach that occurred at uh, the Ubuntu forums for the second time in a few months. And we'll also top that off with uh, a little bit of hacking in baseball. All that and more coming up next. This is a Security Weekly production. Brought to you by IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. IT Pro TV offers 1,000 hours of up to date, high quality video training content. Course topics include certified cloud security professional, ethical hacking, cryptography, and VMware. You can stream their courses live or on demand to your mobile device, all for one low monthly subscription price and cancel at any time. Visit ITProTV forward slash hack naked to upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certifications. Use the code HN30 for a free seven day trial and get 30% off for life. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. All right, let's jump right into the OpenSSH vulnerability that was announced. Uh, specifically, this is a username enumeration vulnerability, meaning that a remote attacker who does not have access to your system is able to uh, discover valid user accounts on your system remotely. Um, and the way they do this is actually, uh, for this specific case, is by sending passwords along with usernames that are very long. So the passwords that, that get submitted uh, on the authentication attempts that an attacker is trying to perform against a the server, um, they submit something really long like, like 25,000 A's uh, or something of the like. And looking at the response times coming back from the server, it's actually possible to see uh, valid, which, which accounts are valid. And, and the way they do that is because valid user accounts are going to re result in a higher response time coming back from the server. And the reason that is is because uh, there's a specific hashing algorithm that got used uh, to, uh, to actually process the, the actual password hashes for valid users on the system. And that specific hashing algorithm takes a lot longer uh, to compare against uh, invalid accounts. Um, so with, with any username enumeration vulnerability, we, we find these on, on a lot of different applications, not just obviously OpenSSH. This is one of the, the first ones I've heard about for OpenSSH. But uh, we find it a lot on web applications. And uh, you know, traditionally, when you start looking for username enumeration vulnerabilities in web apps, uh, you know, you try something like, like inputting like an email address and looking to see if the server responds with either, um, yeah, that username is already in use or that username is invalid. Um, you know, we typically recommend something like, say, you know, the username and password are invalid in combination, because then it, it becomes, um, it, it's, not, it's not specifically clear whether or not it's the username that was a valid or invalid user. But the thing that most people don't understand is that if you look at the response times for web, ap web applications as well, you can do the same thing. So, uh, you know, while this is, you know, a vulnerability in OpenSSH, open it's something we find pretty often in <clears throat> other applications as well. So something to look for, for sure. Uh, there's actually no fix yet for the OpenSSH vulnerability, um, but they're aware of it and they're working on it. So you'll look for a patch uh, for that pretty soon. Let's talk about hacking in baseball. So uh, the Cardinals, well, former Cardinals executive, uh, Chris Correa, uh, has been sentenced to 46 months in prison. Now, what did, what did this guy do who's, a, who's an executive for a baseball team? So here's the thing. In base, in many baseball teams actually use this uh, the online database uh, called Ground Control. And Ground Control is sort of like a, a player database of sorts where they store all kinds of information, very, very much... Um, uh, sensitive team team information that other teams shouldn't have access to. Well, so there was a Cardinals employee who left the Cardinals organization. He went to the Astros, and he had to hand over his ground control creds. He was the guy who was in charge of their ground control account. So he handed over the creds to Chris Correa. And when he went to the Astros, he chose a really poor password, and, and Chris Correa 
actually guessed guessed the uh, he guessed the, the the variation he used on that password for the Astros ground control account. Now, you know, all he did was simply log in to this other company's service uh, by basically guessing a password. Now, is that hacking? You know, it's not. It's it's definitely not what we would you know consider to be hacking, but. Uh, the uh, Computer Fraud Abuse Act absolutely thinks it is. Uh, and the, so he actually was sentenced to 46 months of prison for accessing an account that he did not own. So always keep that in mind. You know, when we, when we look at uh, teaching pen testing or in, information security in general, we always got to remember to, to uh, drive in the ethical factor of it because uh, there's definitely people out there who would see something like, like guessing a password or finding a credential to an account and then logging into that as not being malicious um, because you're not quote unquote like hacking in. Um, but that's that's the way the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act sees it. So um, yeah, Ubuntu Forum breached again. So let's talk about that a little bit. So the Ubuntu Forums, which uh, you know if you are familiar with Ubuntu, you'll there's millions and millions of accounts that are there's tons of posts and tons of people that use the Ubuntu forms all the time. Uh, specifically, the number that I, I saw was 2 million users. Uh, their data was exposed via a SQL injection attack against the Ubuntu forums. Um, so what was stolen uh, that we know about is usernames, email addresses, and IP addresses. The, uh, the actual passwords in the database were hashed and salted. So, uh, you know, there's a very low potential of those being at risk, but still, uh, you're going to want to change your password if you were a uh, if you were a member of the Ubuntu forums. Uh, this particular hack, quote unquote hack, was due to a failure to patch by Ubuntu. They they failed to patch their forum runner add-on. Um, so you know when you when you look at uh, at at any 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 service or any like system based uh, like. Uh, uh, software, you always want to make sure that all the third-party services as well as all the add-ons that you have are being patched. You know, this is a problem we see in enterprises all the time where, where you're, you know, you're patching the main OSs very well. That's, that's cool. Um, but are you actually doing a good job patching all the third-party services? In this case, Ubuntu was not doing a good job patching their third-party services, specifically the forum runner add-on. And that specific third-party service had a SQL injection vulnerability that allowed a remote attacker to gain access to their forum uh, database. Now, Ubuntu says that no access to the actual code repositories was gained or shell access to the server, but still they went ahead and rebuilt the servers, uh, changed all the database passwords, and if you were a member of the forum, you should change your password as well. Lastly, attack of the printers. This is a really, really fun vulnerability in Windows. <laughs> so, uh, a, 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 a group of researchers actually found um, a vulnerability in Windows Print Spooler that would actually allow attackers to turn printers into drive-by exploit kits. Now, specifically, you don't have to actually hack a printer, quote-unquote. You're actually hacking the Windows Print Spooler system itself. So there's a number of different ways to carry out this attack. There's a number, it, the way they've been describing it is, is more of like a watering hole type of attack. So it's one where you could technically like infect a printer uh, with with a specific uh, like driver package, and then just wait for somebody to connect to it. But basically, the uh, the entire basis of this vulnerability is that Windows Print Spooler, the uh, the, the point and print protocol, uh, the point of that is to allow. Uh, let's say you have a corporate organization and you have users that move around your organization. The point of that specific protocol was to allow users to freely move around the environment. And let's say they plug in to uh, an area where there's a printer closer by, they can see that printer, connect to it, and not have to worry about like going and downloading drivers. Instead, you can download the driver directly from the printer itself. The bad part is that it was installing a driver automatically as system. And as you can imagine, this leads to complete compromise of the system if you were to serve up a, a malicious driver. So um, some of the ways that they've been talking about exploiting this is obviously A, Taking, taking over a printer itself, replacing the driver that's being published by the printer itself, uh, or you could actually um, just host a driver and pretend to be a printer as a system on the network, and then have somebody connect to you. 
Um, you could even perform like a man in the middle attack. Uh, there's there's a number of different ways to attack this specific vulnerability, but Microsoft has addressed it. Uh, they they've put out patch MS sixteen oh eight seven. But one caveat with this is that it doesn't actually stop any of the code actually executing on your system. It just presents a warning banner. We know we all know very well how uh, how how much our users like to uh, actually um, you know abide by any warning banners that happen. So take that as you will. That's it for this edition of Hack Naked TV. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out more Hack Naked TV at hacknaked.tv and the show notes at wiki.streamsweekly.com. Uh, you can email us at the show at hacknaked.tv and I'm on Twitter at DashTag. Have a great week.